Hello everyone, it's Silas from AsianCultureVulture.com. We're outside Tate Britain and we're here for an exhibition, Women in Revolt, 1970 to 1990, Art and Activism. There's an amazing array of artists, more than a hundred. There are many South Asian and black women featured here. We're going to be talking to artist Pratiba Palmer and to Tupper Biswas. And we're going to be talking to the curator Inga Fraser about what we can find here. She just shouted back. And that's exactly what I would have done. I would have shouted back for my self-respect, you know. Um, she did that and she got killed for it. Pratiba Palmer, welcome to AsianCultureVulture.com. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's fantastic to be in the space and I see all this wonderful artwork and have my two of my videos yeah. screening here as part of the exhibition. It's amazing. So tell us a little bit about Sari Red, which we're, we're in front of. Yeah, well, Sari Red um, was uh, one of my very early videos. And I made Sari Red when I had read a, the story about this young Indian woman, Kalbinda Kaur Hare, who had been killed by racists on the streets of London. And um, I sort of really identified with her because basically she was walking with two of her friends down the street after college yeah. and being young and carefree as young girls who 17 year olds are and this white van came along with three white men shouting racist abuse at them and she just shouted back and that's exactly what I would have done I would have shouted back for my self-respect you know um, she did that and she got killed for it so when I heard that story I was really deeply moved and I thought, well, that could have been me, you know, it could have been one of my friends because we didn't take racist abuse without shouting back, you know, we weren't going to be the passive Indians that they expected us to be. Um, and so that's how Sari Red came about. And where did Sari Red come in your video making journey and, and why, uh, why video? What led you to make, want to make video and art videos? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I learned quite early on was that the power of the media is so incredible and it can be really impactful and it can travel. Mm. I mean, I was in the academic world before I entered video and filmmaking and I was like, I gave up my PhD thesis because I was like, who's going to read this? A small number of people are going to read this. Whereas if I make a video, if I get something onto television or I get it into a film festival, many more people are going to be able to see this and hear these stories. And one of my main kind of concerns and uh, why I wanted to do video and film was that I wanted to tell stories that have been marginalized. And stories like Kalbinda's, who, you know, I didn't want her to be reduced to the statistic. I wanted her to bring her alive on screen through her death. And so who was this young woman? What were her dreams for tomorrow? What did she see for herself and her future? And how that was snatched away from her because of this racist men who actually got away with her. Oh, how difficult was it to make Sari Red at that time, 1985? You know, it was completely an independent production. Yeah. So I had a little video camera right. that somebody lent me for three weeks and I had 250 pounds and I just taught myself how to use the video camera right. and I made it. Uh -huh. I just spent three weeks making the video and it was just totally led by instinct, by my heart, by my anger, by my fury and my love for this young woman who I did not know but who I felt was really deserved to be honored and memorialized mm -hmm. through this video. And so that's kind of how I did it. And I was learning. I was at an early stage of my yeah. film video career and yeah. I was learning, you know. How do you look back on that here now in the Tate and at the time when you were releasing it and the response then and now? How do you, look, how do you reflect on that, that long journey? And well, we're going to talk about your other video here, but yeah. let's just talk about Sorry Red and that particular journey. Well, it's kind of astounding to me, yeah. really, that um, 
And this little video, now I saw it, that I made at a particular moment in time in the late 80s, 1980s. Um, and it was made, it was screened for at a tiny little film festival in Brighton under the arches. Mm -hmm. And then I, th I thought, that's it, right. you know, that will be it. And I was suddenly hailed as this video artist, the Museum of Modern Art bought a copy of Sari Red, the Pompidou Centre bought a copy of Sari Red, and I was suddenly like, I was like, this is incredible. I never expected my small video to have this kind of an impact. And I think that, you know, what it taught me was that when you make something from your heart, when you make something from a place of truth, um, I, I think that it speaks to a lot of different people. And so the film, the video has had a long life uh, since then. It's been screened at a number of different film festivals over the years. Um, it's used as a part of a curriculum in U the US. We've come a long way, but where, where do you think racism is now? And how do, we, how do we challenge it? How do we keep this conversation alive and make sure that people understand that there has been progress. There are so many systemic ways in which race, racism has become enshrined within British culture and within British uh, you know, polit body politic. And to me, the worst thing is that we have a South Asian prime minister and we have a South Asian, whatever Suella, Cruella, the Braverman the is, you know, yeah. the Home Secretary, they are like, perpetrating the worst racism, worse than what Enoch Powell was perpetrating at the time that I was growing up and when I first arrived oh, in this country. Wow. And I think that that's what's so, not just shocking, but that is just so upsetting to so many of us who are like fought against racism and fought for representation, but not this kind of representation, you know. So to me, it's not about what you look like, but it's about what are you going to do mm. for the people who don't have a voice. Um, and the, the kind of the racism that a lot of refugees are experiencing right now, is, is, it's abysmal. Mm. And, and I think that that is kind of uh, a real kind of hot issue for, right. for, our, for British culture and British yeah. society right. to deal with. It's like humanizing people rather than dehumanizing them mm. and to challenge this kind of you know the narrative yeah. um, around refugee people Absolutely. and for us for us as South Asians I mean we are like not, I don't know fourth fifth generation uh, now yeah. probably yeah. you know I was second generation mm -hmm. and you know it's great that we are so embedded within uh, British culture uh, as artists and you know we had pioneers like Anish Kapoor yeah. and you know yeah. uh, and then Sutapa Biswas's work is here in this exhibition. Yes there are many artists Charlie Kumari Singh Berman and yeah. um, so forth. Uh, can I bring you now to Reframing AIDS the sure. second video so yeah, sure. again what, what was um, uh, why did you want to make a film about that? I mean, I think part why I made Reframing AIDS was as a kind of counter narrative to the government narrative that was kind of, you know, calling AIDS a, a, a gay plague, uh, also saying that it had come from Africa. So there was kind of both racism and homophobia intertwined in the Thatcher government's response to the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. And the summer of 1987 was a terrible time for particularly for LGBTQ communities and people of color. I mean, the fact that they were sort of saying that AIDS was like a, uh, had come from Africa, then was being used to have tighter immigration controls, greater police surveillance on communities of color. Um, so I kind of wanted to make a video that had gave voice to people who were not being heard and the people who were being most affected by the AIDS and HIV crisis. And they were not just gay men, they were women too, and people of color. Um, you know, there was this whole kind of uh, silence around, mm. oh, there are no black gays and lesbians, or there are no Asian lesbians and gay, uh, gay men. Yeah, no, uh, you know, so uh, LGBTQ communities are all white. Well, it's just such an utter nonsense. Uh, and as a result, the kind of information that these communities needed in how to prevent HIV transmission wasn't getting through. And it was the same with women. It was like assumed that women were 
weren't affected. Yeah. There were many women who were HIV mm. positive. Mm. And so with reframing AIDS, I really wanted to kind of correct that kind of harmful dominant narrative and really sort of put forward these other voices. Would you say a lot of your work is about allowing people to be seen and heard? And you see yourself as telling those stories from the margins and bringing them to the center? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, um, the reason I got into making mm -hmm. films and videos was precisely because I wanted to correct the invisibility of South Asian stories, the invisibility of stories from the LGBTQ communities. And, and when we were visible, then we were kind of pathologized. We were like in these kind of negative sort of stereotypes of Asian women were meek and passive and walk three steps behind their men. And, you know, I mean, we had the Grunwick strike, Jai Ben Dashai, yeah, you know, yeah. who looked like my mother uh, yeah, yeah. in wearing her sari and yeah, everything. I, I just, you know, I think that those, the, the kind of stories that I've always wanted to tell and I've continued to tell over the last three decades of my career really. So how did it feel to be in this exhibition with so many women and the art and activism? Can you say a little bit about how you see art and activism? Absolutely. I mean, I think that, well, first of all, it's really an honor to be part of this incredible exhibition. I think that this exhibition is so such a visionary idea by the curator, uh, uh, Lindsay. I think that she has really curated a program and of uh, all these artworks that kind of really spoke to a particular moment in the 80s, from the early 80s right through to the late 80s, early 90s. And it was about women's response to how they were being depicted in mainstream media. Women's response as artists, as painters, as photographers, uh, in my case as a video maker, as a filmmaker. And I think that it's really important that this work and this exhibition is here at Tate Britain mm -hmm. because this is the bastion of kind of, you know, art and a kind of the recognition that all, many of these artists are finally receiving by being in this space, in this institution, as part of this exhibition, I think is, you know, just great. I mean, they they totally deserve it, and it's, Absolutely. you know, it's about yes. time. Um, so yeah, great. I think it's. I, I love the fact that my two of my early videos are screening here uh, uh, as part of the exhibition, yeah. and and you know, new audiences will get to see that, and Absolutely. hopefully, they'll discover more of my mm. other work. Thank you so much. It was okay. wonderful to share. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.